Blood moon tetrads in the second coming. Now, tetrads themselves are not rare, but they are extremely rare when they land on the Lord's feast days. That's what makes it something that we are paying attention to because we're wondering, could they be uh, possible prophetic markers? This is what Pastor Mark Biltz, I believe, discovered in 119 Ministries talks about as well, what's coming up in 2014 and 2015. We see a blood moon on the second day of unleavened bread, April 15th. It's another blood moon on the Feast of Tabernacles, October 8th. In 2015, at, at the beginning of their year, the Hebrew year, month one of the Hebrew year, uh, March 20th in this case, 2015, a total solar eclipse, blood moon on Passover, a partial solar eclipse on the Feast of Trumpets, September 13th, and a blood moon on Tabernacles, September 27th. Here's a uh, short video, it's about seven minutes long, of a much longer teaching. It's like an hour and a half, I think, something like that from 119 Ministries, but this is just a, a, a portions that I pulled from that video to explain what they believe, in their own words, may be uh, happening in the near future with regard to these tetrads. It is believed by most, and for good reason, that the Lord will return on a future day of trumpets. If, according to Joel, these blood moons must occur before the day of the Lord, and the Lord returns on a future day of trumpets, then it cannot be in 2015 that Yeshua is returning. It must be after these signs. The next Feast of Trumpets that is after the Blood Moon Tetrads, which is what Joel requires, is found in 2016, specifically the evening of August 31st to the evening of September 1st, 2016. For those following the man-made Hillel II calendar that most of the Jews follow, they have the day of trumpets on the incorrect day. But for those who keep the same calendar that the Father teaches and that the Messiah kept in the year of his death to fulfill the spring feasts, it is those that also know how to correctly calculate the fall feasts. The chances of there being both blood moon tetrads on Yahweh's appointed times and a total solar eclipse are astronomically rare, to say the least. But we are not done. As statistically impossible as all of that just was, Yahweh gave His people even more. He just did not tell His people the signs that are to occur before the day of the Lord. He also told us the signs that are to occur on the day of the Lord. We are sure you will agree, testing everything has never been such a delight. Mark chapter 13. But in those days after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers that are in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. We have three signs before us, and each one is simply amazing. If the signs before the day of the Lord were literal, then the signs on the day of the Lord should be literal as well. Yeshua said that we have the stars and the constellations that will be falling from heaven. And Isaiah states that because the stars fall, the constellations do not give their light. If you watched our teaching, Time, our Creator's Calendar, you would have seen how every year certain constellations, which Job also discussed, fall to the horizon and disappear from the observer's view. This happens every year in the fall. The prophets and Yeshua also state that the moon shall not give its light. Again, if you have watched our teaching on the calendar, you will realize that the new moon, the first day of the Hebraic month, is the day on which the moon does not give its light. And if Yeshua is returning on Yahweh's prophetic appointed times, then there is only one appointed day that happens on a new moon, on a day in which the moon does not give its light. That is the day of trumpets. So, now we have Yeshua and Isaiah clearly telling us that on a future day of trumpets, as we enter the season of fall, Yeshua will be returning. To anyone who has studied prophecy 
and knows Yahweh's Moedim, the appointed days, then this is of no surprise. However, we have one sign left, and this last sign gives it all away. Mark 13. The sun will be darkened on the day of the Lord. Before the day of the Lord, we were told the sun would be turned into darkness, pitch black, clearly a total solar eclipse. On the day of the Lord, there is one minor difference with the sun. The sun will be darkened, not as turned to darkness. The difference between darkened and darkness is the same difference between a partial solar eclipse and a total solar eclipse. Thus, on the future day of trumpets that leads us into the fall feast, we are to find a literal partial solar eclipse. As you can expect, an eclipse on the day of trumpets is quite rare. But we did find one occurrence of a partial solar eclipse on the day of trumpets. It is none other than September 1st of 2016. So now we have the signs before the day of the Lord and the signs on the day of the Lord that will be fulfilled literally before our eyes. Yet, we're not done. It just continues getting more astounding. Most everyone agrees that the three and a half years or the 1,260 days of the Great Tribulation begins when we see the abomination of desolation. Yeshua gave us another cryptic sign that has eluded most for the last 2,000 years. Matthew chapter 24. So, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by the prophet Daniel standing in the holy place, let the reader understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let the one who is on the housetop not go down to take what is in his house. And let the one who is in the field not turn back to take his cloak. And alas, for women who are pregnant and for those who are nursing infants, in those days. Pray that your flight may not be in winter or on a Sabbath. Watch this. Take September 1st of 2016, the day the prophets and Yeshua seem to say that he is returning, and then subtract 1,260 days. You will land precisely on the evening of March 21st to the evening of March 22nd. And believe it or not, it is the day after winter and the day before a Sabbath, fully unlocking Yeshua's cryptic statement. Yeshua told us nearly 2,000 years ago that the abomination of desolation, or the start of the 1,260 days, was going to be the day after winter and the day before a Sabbath. Even ignoring all the other literal signs we just reviewed, this sign alone is nearly impossible to do while having it conclude directly on a future day of trumpets. When they put that video out and I saw 322, <laughs> I was like, whoa, no way! I was totally flipping out because I'd already written a few sections of my book on 322. And, you know, I, call, I consider myself a researcher, and by that mean, I mean I re search what has been searched by others before me. So when I saw their research, I thought, well, I got to go check this out for myself. And sure enough, looking at the tetrads, looking at all this stuff, and then S September 1st, 2016, backing off 1,260 days, landing on 32213, I was like, whoa. Now, they say they believe that the abomination of desolation will take place uh, next month, basically is what it comes down to. I don't believe that. Now, I love those guys. I've had them on my radio show. I love their heart. Um, and I love the fact that they, they even say, hey, look, we don't have it all right either. Test everything is their whole motto, and I appreciate that. Um, when I tested it, I came to a different conclusion. I guess we'll find out soon enough who's right. <laughs> it's only one month away. In my view, there's way too many things that still need to be put in place that haven't been put in place that I can't see that happening in the next month. Um, but I think there might be, they may be onto something with that 322.13 anyway. And I'll explain what I mean by that right now. The time of Jacob's trouble. I found this uh, quote right here. 
the scriptures indicate that the day of the Lord, the time of Jacob's trouble, and the great tribulation have several things in common. First, the concept of trouble or tribulation are associated with all three. Second, the concept of an unparalleled time of trouble is identified with all three. Third, the term great is used for all three. Fourth, the concept of birth pangs is associated with all three. Fifth, the expression that day is used for all three. Sixth, Israel's future repentance or spiritual restoration to God is associated with all three. These comparisons demonstrate that several of the same concepts and terms are associated with the day of the Lord, the time of Jacob's trouble, and the great tribulation. They indicate that the day of the Lord will cover or at least include the same time period as the time of Jacob's trouble and the great tribulation. This is from an individual named Renald E. Showers from the uh, BibleStudyTools.com there. Uh, when I started to think about the time of Jacob's trouble, I started looking up some scriptures on that. We see that that comes from Jeremiah chapter 30, verses 7 through 10. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. Uh, the time of Jacob's trouble, though, if you look up, you know, Isaiah 46.10, declaring the end from the beginning. If we want to understand the time of Jacob's trouble in the end, we have to understand, we have to understand the time of Jacob's trouble in the beginning. And so we go to Genesis and read about the time of Jacob's trouble, and we see repeatedly that the time of Jacob's trouble is referred to as a time period that lasted 20 years. And so I wonder if 322.13 might actually kick off a 20-year time period known as the time of Jacob's trouble. You saw all the videos and stuff I showed you in the previous session about what's going on between now and 2045. How could we survive past that? I believe that that's our, that's our window of what we have time for, what, what, what's left. Will the abomination of desolation take place on 32213 as 119 Ministries thinks? I don't know. Could be. We'll only have about a month more to wait to find out. My personal opinion is no. I will say the numbers are awfully interesting and the signs are very compelling. And of course, I will be watching, keeping my eye on them. But I'm preparing for the long haul. I believe we have another 20 years, and I believe the 20-year time period of Jacob's trouble may begin on 322.13. The reason I say that is because many people, most people, I think, believe that Christ was crucified, died, and rose from the dead in 33 AD. Well, we see in 2 Peter 3.8 that a day with the Lord is just a thousand years, and a thousand years is a day. Then we have this interesting scripture here in Hosea. Chapter 6, verse 2, he will revive us after two days. He will raise us up on the third day that we may live before him. 33 AD plus two God days, 2,000 years, puts you in 2033. All right, 20 years from 2013. So uh, again, I'm just pulling out scriptures and looking at it and saying, is this what it's saying? Don't believe anything I say because I'm just a student just like you. Okay, I'm just making observations like I said earlier and I'm, and I'm inviting you to consider these observations for yourself. Because as we looked into this, when you look at 2033 and 2034, a very similar set of alignments happens to what we see uh, in the tetrad cycles that Mark Biltz and 119 Ministries talked about. In month one of the Hebrew calendar in 2033, we have a total solar eclipse. In, uh, during unleavened bread, we have a blood red moon. During Feast of Trumpets, we have a partial solar eclipse. During tabernacles, we have another blood red moon in 2033. In 2034, the beginning of the Hebrew year, again, month one, in this case, March 20th, 2034, we have a total solar eclipse. Then on unleavened bread, again, we have a blood red moon. And on the Feast of Trumpets, we have a very interesting solar eclipse. You'll notice what 119 Ministries said. If the, if the signs before the day of the Lord are to be taken literally, then the signs on the day of the Lord also have to be considered literally. And they said that the sun will be darkened, not turned to darkness. So they were saying, they were making a case that therefore it must be talking about a partial solar eclipse. Remember that in their video. Well, what's interesting about this full solar eclipse is this is what's known as an annular solar eclipse. It's where the moon is a little further out such that it doesn't cover up the entire sun. It kind of makes a dot in the middle of the sun forming a really freaky looking ring right there. So the sun is darkened, but not completely blacked out like it would be in a to otherwise solar eclipse, total solar eclipse. So in my mind, this is even more significant than the signs that 119 was looking at and Mark Biltz was looking at. I believe that the time of Jacob's trouble may begin next month, and we may be looking at a 20-year cycle leading up to this time period right here.